Hello, welcome back to Football League World TV. It's time for another episode of The Debate. And this time we're talking Mansfield Town and whether they're on course for promotion in Skybet League 2. I'm your host, George Daggers, and joining me this afternoon is Marcus Alley. Marcus, how are you? Yeah, really well, thanks, George. Glad to be on for this one. I think one of the comeback stories of the EFL this season, Mansfield Town back from flirting with the relegation spots at the beginning of the campaign. Why did anyone ever doubt Nigel Clough? It's been great to see their resurgence in the last few months. Mm, the Stags are certainly flying at the moment, having turned it around early this year. Uh, Mansford fans, do get in touch. Let us know, are you on course for promotion this year in League 2? We're across Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, live for the next 20 or so minutes. Get in touch with us. Let us know your thoughts on the way the season seems to be going for your side. Uh, let's get straight into this debate. Uh, Marcus, I think it probably makes sense to just you know talk about Mansfield's season so far. In general, very much been a Jekyll and Hyde year for them, hasn't it? Um, Started off very poorly. They're struggling for results. People getting on Nigel Clough's back as well. And then they've turned it around and they're in, you know, the form team in in the country, really, in the top four tiers. They're going brilliantly. What have you made of it? Yeah, as you mentioned, a complete uh, Jekyll and Hyde season. It was more of a continuation of last season. Nigel Clough really struggled after a little bit of a bounce to, to put his stamp on the team. They did have a very underwhelming sort of second third of, of last season and that that sort of carried over into this season seeing them sort of competing just above the relegation zone in that sort of early season conversation um but they've really refound their their goal scoring touch which they'd lost for for months on end um recently and all of the, the summer signings that looked a little bit concerning at the start of the season struggled to really hit the ground running have started to, to really start um buying into Nigel Clough's methods and, and really starting to thrive. Just looking at the, some of the players they brought in in the summer that are now real crucial parts of their promotion push. You look at Ollie Hawkins, Bishop, the goalkeeper on, line, on loan from Man United, uh, Reese Oates, Elliot Hewitt, John Jaro Tall, Daniel Johnson, of course, and Stephen Quinn, a bit of an EFL legend, the, the veteran attacking midfielder. All players that started very slowly, but now are, are key cogs in, in the first team playing almost week in, week out. And that, that that just shows what an excellent window it was. Um, maybe we jumped to conclusions a, a little bit early, but it's definitely proved like they've been smart in, in the transfer market. And I'm sure we'll get on to th- their operations this month also. Mm. Do you think it's just the case then, Marcus, that, you know, like you sort of hinted at, that people were just very quick to jump to conclusions. It's easy to forget it's a 46-game season in League Two. And after 10, you know, after 10 or so games, Yes, there's an idea of where a team might be heading, but there's still plenty of time to turn it around. And it seems like it just needed to click at Mansfield, and it looks like clearly it has now. Well, as is always the case, or seems to be the case in League Two, out of the three EFL tiers, it is usually the most evenly matched, um, usually the most sort of similar budgets. Um, some clubs stick out from that in recent years, but usually there's not that big of a gap between sort of the, the the top of the relegation group of, of clubs and the bottom of the sort of playoff chasing pack. And the sort of run that Mansfield have been on has enabled them to just jump straight up that, um, basically changing the, the whole outlook in, of their season in the space of a, about a month of football. So um, I, I'm not sure we were too quick to judge. I think a lot of people had high early season expectations, as it always seems, you know, in these sort of... Um, anti-post and, and show previews, it, uh, season previews, Mansfield always seems to be a popular name with automatic promotion or a playoff playoff push. And, and so they should be with, with um, a manager of the calibre of Nigel Clough. But it didn't look like it was going to materialise uh, in, in the first or third of the season. But yeah, League Two, we, we, we see it maybe more often than in the rest of the divisions that if you are able to, to completely you know, grow in confidence, get some positive momentum going, then just uh, a positive run of, of maybe five or six games can completely change the whole feel of the club. And, and clearly at the moment, they're, they're looking back up the table, even though they've managed to already burst into those playoff places. Mm. Let, let's talk about some of their key strengths then, Marcus. I think one that stands out to me is that they seem to have goals from all over the place. They don't necessarily have a real, you know, big high, high leading top scorer at the moment. That can obviously change in the, in the weeks to come. But it's more the goals that evenly spread throughout the team. I mean, again, they're not the, the highest scorers as a team in the league, but they seem to have goals from all over the pitch. And that, for me, is probably one of their biggest strengths. Absolutely. Yeah, um, sharing the goals out is always a sign of a good team. 
Um, I, I think their top scorer has got five league goals or something uh, around that mark. So that just demonstrates the way that they're sharing the mount. Also, that the competition for places as well and the way that injuries maybe haven't affected them because Clough's always had a player to, to come straight in and, and fill that role, certainly in the last few months, that, that's been able to, to stake a claim to, to remain in the first team picture. You, you mentioned that they haven't been the most sort of uh, electric in, in the final third. They haven't needed to be. Um, in their recent run with, with 10 wins in their last 11, in eight out of those 11 games, they've conceded one goal or fewer. So you score a goal and you're going to win or draw, draw the game on eight of those 11 occasions. So um, that, that's really been able to help them sort of get a foothold in games and, and start to really put their put their impetus and take the impetus on and, and really sort of show their authority in a match and, and take control of it where they weren't able to at the start of the season because it, it felt like they were playing catch up. They were digging holes for themselves left, right and centre, um, whereas they've been able to, to really stabilise, build a solid foundation. And that, that's given the attacking players a, a platform to, to really be um, make match winning contributions. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how they can kick on from that. But I think the solid base that, that Klus has been able to establish and really improve their defensive showings in the last few months has has probably been the rock that that this promotion push um, has been built on. Mm, yeah, they've certainly you know turned plenty of aspects around from you know the start of the season. Um, Marcus, I guess the next question is though, what weaknesses kind of remain in this Mansfield team? Are there, are there particular still you know facets that that need addressing if if Mansfield are to achieve promotion this season? What still stands out to you that, that you feel Nigel Clough might want to work on in the weeks ahead? Well, I'm, I'm struggling to be honest. When when you look at a run of, of 10 wins in 11 and how rare that that is that we see that in the EFL, it is uh, tough to immediately pick out some weaknesses. I would say it has been quite a kind run. Um, seven out of the 11 teams that they've faced have been uh, in the bottom half. Uh, but three of those wins have come against Swindon, Tramir and Salford who are in the top half. The loss, of course, coming against Sutton United. So there will be tougher periods in terms of the fixture schedule to come in um, the, the coming months and, and after we get out of, of the transfer window. But I see a decent depth in the squad. I think they've got plenty of League Two experience, particularly in that back line, the likes of Farron Rawson, John Joe O'Toole, uh, Elliot Hewitt as well. They've got, they've got good leaders that I think have been crucial in not letting their heads drop, even though it looked like uh, at one stage that any kind of promotion push this season would, would have to be put on hold and maybe they're hoping to, to build for next season under Nigel Clough. But um, yeah, it, it's it's tough to put weaknesses in. As we've mentioned, maybe not an out-and-out goal scorer, not a real leading marksman, but I do think that's that also can come in as a strength because there's not a, a, an immediate player that they look to and, and, and rely on and for opposition to plan for. So it's hard to pick one because of the the amazing run that they've been on. However, it's going to be interesting to see how they get on against the real cream of the cream at the top of League Two. Of course, that Forest Green match was abandoned very early on at, um, at a nil-nil score. It'll be interesting to see how that rearranged fixture, fixture pans out. They've got Newport County uh, next month as well. That'll be an interesting test as you know, it gets really close in the table. A win over a direct rival can mean so much more because of because of how the, the table is situated. So um, it's hard to pick out, pick out an immediate weakness. They don't have the firepower that some clubs at the top of the table do, but I'm not sure that will end up costing them. I think that they're they're well placed and um, the squad is definitely well set up to to compete with the clubs around them in the second half of the season. I mean, talking about firepower, Nigel Clough's obviously looked to try and add to that a little bit and bring in Lucas Aikens in from Burton Albion. Use the use the old contact book there. What do you make of that particular signing? I'm really enthusiastic about it, to be honest. Um, mm. I was surprised to see him leave Burton. I, I know he's 32, but his injury record's been excellent. Um, he's so versatile. It does strike me as a bit of a League One, League Two, Mikel Antonio playing right back and then striker at times. Um, for the Brewers, it's an outstanding bit of business. Given his fitness record, I don't see any reason why he can't play sort of past the age of, of 35, 36. He, he does rely on his physical attributes a, a little bit, but I think that intelligence could could increase in the coming years and maybe we could see him play in, in a more of a, of a deeper role. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's an outstanding bit of business. Obviously, Nigel Clough will, will know him well and, and how to get the best out of him. And it's just a great player to have to, to add to the squad. I'm not sure if he'll go straight in immediately, given how well the players have been playing. I'm not sure he'll be he'll be starting sort of a, a string of games in the next month 
or so. But in building towards the, the real crunch time at the end of the season, he's really experienced. He's such a handful, even if he is just coming off the bench. Um, yeah, he, he contributes in, in so many different ways. I do think it's, it's a superb piece of business. I think what's good with this sign as well, I think it's fair to say that he's not coming in and he's just come from a spell at Burton where he wasn't playing. He was a regular, really, wasn't he, for the first half of the season with the Brewers in League One. It kind of shows that he's still very much got the attributes needed to to perform, particularly at League Two level. And he, he should really have an impact, shouldn't he, for the rest of this year? Yeah, definitely. It's um, a place where he had an amazing relationship with the fans, the club, a lot of trust was put in him. Maybe he felt that that was starting to wane. And Jimmy Floyd hustled ben Bank and felt like a manager who had a little bit more faith in him and Clough would be a sensible decision at this stage of his career. I would say if it wasn't for his age, he'd definitely still be a Burton Albion player. I think he's probably looking at, you know, if he is going to fall out of favour under Hasselbank, how does he prolong his career in the EFL? And Mansfield are clearly a side on the up. Um, they've got the financial capabilities to, to possibly have him on a similar deal to what he was uh, on at Burton Albion. Um, so it does seem like a good move for both parties. I'm surprised to see Aikens drop down to League Two level um, maybe this season and maybe even next season. But um, of course, he could get back into the third tier, which is, is probably part of the motivation for the move. Mm. Are there any other areas, Marcus, you think that... You know, we've got a week to go in the transfer window. Do you think there's other, other parts of the pitch managers will be looking to try and add or, or, or should look to try and add? Um, I, I think they could have a little bit more depth in central defence. Um, I, I think with, with Rawson and O'Toole, we've seen Hawkins has had to play at centre-back quite a lot this season. Now, he's been in good form at the top of the pitch. You wouldn't really want to take... You'd kind of lose a, an attacking player for, for, for filling a hole at the back. Um, but apart from that, I'm not so sure. I think it is one of the one of the deeper squads in League Two. Got plenty of options, particularly going forward. Um, obviously, getting John Joe O'Toole, uh, his contract extended was was pivotal. I'm sure he might have been considering some other options, maybe in League Two after his performances in in the last couple of months. Um, nothing really jumps off the page in terms of that. I, I do think, which is why we were surprised they started so slowly. That there was quite a, a nice well-rounded um, and, and well-assembled squads that would be ready for Mansfield to compete in, in this sort of area of the table, sort of b between the outside of the playoffs and, and mid-table. So, yeah, nothing really jumps off the page. They'll be happy to get O'Toole extended. Um, but, yeah, maybe another defender um, so to add even maybe even some, some more experience to the ranks, as I'm sure the fixture list is, is going to get very congested um, as we move towards towards the business end. Mm, certainly is. Um, let's talk Nigel Clough now for a little bit, Marcus. Um, I think at times earlier this season, it's fair to say that, that some were, were getting on his back a little bit, as is always the case when a team goes through a rougher patch of form. Um, it's probably fair to say that some managers that perhaps have less experience than, than he does in the EFL may have crumbled and wilted under that and they could have gone. But, you know, as as is typical Nigel Clough, he was, he was quite bullish and, and you know, had plenty of self-belief in what he was doing. And, you know, it seems to have come out the other side. How much credit do you think he deserves? And, you know, how much, how important do you think that experience is for Mansfield in terms of the, the rest of this season? Yeah, I think in the, in the crunch encounters, it could be huge. If, if they are to finish in the playoffs, then I, I definitely think he, he'd back himself to sort of out-tactic another League Two manager, whether that comes to pass. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure, but um, it's going to be really interesting to see how he sort of goes on from this because... I don't think it's sort of sustainable or realistic to think they're going to go on a run like this um, for the rest of the season. If they do, the autos are, are definitely in their reach. But it's going to be interesting to see how we can get a reaction. Um, I, for one, was was really surprised that he didn't get sacked earlier on in the season. I think maybe his reputation and his track record and the jobs that he's done in, in League One and the Championship were the reason why he was granted a little bit more patience from, from the club hierarchy at Mansfield. Um mm. I think the the leaders in the squad as well have helped him um, sort of keep that sort of authority. Um, obviously, they, to turn it around the way they did, it, it wouldn't have been a surprise at the start of the season if some players were questioning the methods because the calibre of the players in the squad did not match the results that they were putting out on paper. Um, but with the authority that he has and the, the past record and respect that that commands, um, that's been huge in, in being able to get the fans back on side, get get the players back on side, and get them pushing 
in the right direction. Um, yeah, we, we were silly to, to doubt him, really, weren't we? Um, looking at that squad, they, they have no reason to, to not be believing that they can achieve what would be a, an amazing automatic promotion. Maybe not too dissimilar to Bolton last season. Um, Ian Everett was, was definitely very bullish and, and strong and believing in, in his ideas through the tougher times as well. Um, so, yeah, Nigel Clough has, has shown an example to, to all managers under pressure, really, on, on maybe how to conduct yourself. And um, just that that confidence to portray over to the squad must, must have helped them um, in, in, in turning it around. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, like we keep saying, a, a real season two half. So at one point they were, you know, they were winless for in, into double figures. And now you look at the run of form they're on. Um, certainly going coming along on the rails at the moment in League Two, but I guess the question is, Mark, is there's always a side that does this in the fourth tier, particularly. There always seems to be a side that comes in at the at the right moment, uh, in great form. But is there a chance, perhaps, if it's you know even a even an argument to be made, can a team peak too soon? And are Mansfield guilty of doing that potentially? Are, are they going to be that worried? Really, at the, at the end of the day, they've got themselves in the picture now. Yeah, I don't think they'll be too concerned about that at all. Um, if they've peaked too soon and even if they do have a little dip they've got plenty of time to to turn it back around again they've put themselves in such a strong position just three points off the automatic promotion places you've got um sutton sitting in third and they've played one more than mansfield um so yeah they're, no, they're, they're in a great position i don't think they'll be worried about that the rest of league two will definitely be looking over their shoulders and thinking this is a serious contender if they can maybe add, add a couple of decent additions towards the back end of the transfer window and just continue, just add some consistency this to this run. It, it's not going to go on forever. But if they can keep being as hard to beat, um, keep being as solid defensively, and um, those those attacking players can continue to grow in confidence, then there's no reason why they can't at least establish them the, themselves in, in the playoff picture in the coming months. Um, yeah, that they might have peaked too early. They're not going to go on a run like this again. That That just won't happen. But... I don't think that'll be that'll be too concerning for them, given the complete transformation in prospects of their season that's come with yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I suppose they know that, given the way form was at the start of the year, if they lose one or two games, which is inevitably going to happen between now and the end of the season, they more than they more than know that they can bounce back from that, don't they? Absolutely. This is a, a reference point for for Nigel Clough to to prove to the players that, that they can do it. Um, I listed off those those three excellent wins against the sides around them: Swim, Swindon, Tranmere, and Salford. A little little bit further back in the table, but just this stretch should ensure that the heads never drop again this season. Um, yeah, going into going into the business end of the season, they'll be believing more than ever that that some sides that maybe have have uh, put together the bulk of their points tally in the earlier months of the season compared to them. Um, the likes of Swindon were more up there at the start than maybe they are now. Um, that, that they're in a better, in their current guys than some of the other clubs in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, that they've definitely got plenty of belief in the camp. Um, and I'm sure that, yeah, that there'll be no issues in, in motivation and, and keeping those players believing that they can achieve promotion this season. OK, let's get to our conclusion. Uh, so, Marcus, um, like you mentioned earlier on, Mansell just three points off of the top three at the moment with a game in hand as well on Sutton United who are in that third place. Um, the this you know the title of this debate was, can Mansfield win promotion this year? So, what's your answer? Can they do it? And how will they do it? Via the top three or, or via the playoffs? I think they will, but I'm going to go for in the playoffs. I don't think them, they might just not have enough to get into automatic promotion. I, I think... The eye-catching style of this run ha will make teams play against Mansfield as if they're already in the automatic promotion places, uh, maybe sit off them a little bit more and without that uh, extra attacking firepower, as we've touched on, it might become a little bit more difficult to, to string the wins together as they have done. Um, but I have to back Nigel Clough in, in that situation in the playoffs. Mansfield have, have had their trials and tribulations in, in recent years, finishing in the top seven and, and coming up just short. But given the momentum, which which seems to count for something in the in the playoffs um, and the experiences with, within the playing squad, there's a lot of players that have won promotion from League Two um, still in that squad. So, yeah, I, I would edge on Mansfield to get promoted. I think maybe they'll come fourth again, a bit of agony like 2018-19, missing out on automatic promotion right towards um, the last couple of games 
of the season. But I think they'll be able to to stay in check mentally, um, stay stay stable and, and calm and composed going into a promotion race that maybe they they have a different sort of mental approach to it because they weren't wouldn't have been expecting this in the last few months. So maybe that takes the pressure off a little bit, um, given that there's a there's there would have been times this season where fans have had anxieties about relegation to the National League. So um, I am going to back Mansfield Town to, to get promoted. I think they will probably have to do it via the playoffs. Um, but looking at the recent run they've been on, the consistency of their performances, it's, it's very hard to write them off. OK, certainly is. We shall see. Uh, Mansfield are potentially in line for a very exciting next few months in League Two. Uh, that's been the debate. Uh, this time around on Football League World TV. One more show to come on the channel uh, today. That's at 4pm, so not too long from now. Uh, EFL Transfer Zone is back again. Uh, Sam Rock hosting that one. Ben Wignall and Chris Gallagher will be joining him. Uh, Marcus, thanks for joining me this afternoon. It's been great to get your thoughts on all things Stags. Uh, Mansfield fans, hopefully you enjoyed what we've had to say as well. Good luck for the rest of the season. We'll be watching keenly, see how long this run can be kept up. Uh, just a quick plug as well for for Football League World TV. Uh, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and do like this video as well as we continue to try and grow it in 2022. But from myself and Marcus, it's bye for now. <laughs>